Ready? Everybody rolling? Okay. Good morning. I'm Mayor Patrick, and uh, we're here this morning to try to answer some of your questions. First, I'd like to say that Garrettsville Village is devastated by the happenings, of the fire in the last couple days, and uh, just want to thank all the businesses that have donated to help, that have come together, the citizens that have come together. It's just overwhelming the people of our town that have just pitched in uh, to buy things in the stores, to bring them up to the firemen, to help the firemen and the police departments in any way that they could. Um, I just am overwhelmed. Uh, Portage County Sheriff's Office has offered a huge support. Other police agencies in, in the county also have been here. Um, we've had a total of 34 fire departments assisting. Um, mayors of other communities I've spoke with offering any help that they could. Uh, all the commissioners I have spoke with, uh, former commissioners have called to see what they could do. And there will be some things down the road that we are going to try to do together. Um, the, F the fire department is still on scene and there's hot spots and they'll be working on that. I imagine till next day or so, there'll still be hot spots. They do what they could do to uh, get it down to a minimum, but we still have that. The fire is still under investigation, and there's no dollar loss that has been set at this point. Two firefighters were injured, but they were treated and released, and I believe one was back on, right, Chief? Yes. <laughs> so. Um, any questions? You want to start? Exactly how many businesses are we talking about that are being affected? Uh, 13. And is there one that is salvageable? What is, is that law office? Are there only one that's uh, salvageable? It appears to, yes. right, Chief? It looks like it will be. Can you tell where the fire started? Chief? It's being investigated currently <laughs> at this time. Investigation will continue through to tomorrow with the state and the ATF involved in that. Do you expect to have them? Are they going to be out there today? And uh, no, no, they will be here tomorrow. Um, the scene is being protected by the Sheriff's Department, um, the Garrisonville Police Department, and the Garrisonville Fire Department. Chief, if you could run us through the chronology of events from the time the first crews arrived. Obviously, it turned into mayhem as far as your ability to deal with it and the need for additional Forces, but I mean, how did this all play out? Uh, we got the call yesterday about 1.15 uh, from somebody that ran into the police department stating the village was on fire. Uh, we arrived automatically, activated mutual aid companies, um, tapped into the village water source. People may have experienced some low water pressures, but we did not really run out of water with the village. We wanted to protect that water supply so the village residents would maintain a water system. We started a water shuttle and drafting uh, situation to supply the ladders. Um, and I feel it went very well once we got some more help here. The age of the structure obviously played a role in this. Age of the structure played a role in it. Um, the multiple times it was remodeled, um, double roofs, triple roofs, multiple ceiling levels also played a role in it. Void spaces. And of course, the structure itself predates uh, firewalls, but you did have one firewall. Where was that located? That was the building that is still standing, the block building. Um, but the fire was actually able to get around that through the wood structure that was added on to the back of that block building. You talk about the age of the structure. What are we talking about here for those of us that are from here? 1850. 1815? 1850? 1850. Was there any rehab work being done? You said that there was remodels. Was that anything that's currently happening? Uh, currently at this time, no. So there's no suspected like uh, someone was on the roof doing something that started the fire? Um, I'm not going to comment that on that at this time. So 
So there was some construction? Uh, there was some type of roof collapse prior when we had the snow and rains. Um, but to my knowledge, that was remedied temporarily. And they weren't repairing it in the process? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. So, some, so going back to yesterday again, somebody ran to the police department? To, there was no 911 call or anything like that? Uh, initially, no. A scene this large presents so many challenges for your department, for the people who had to work the incident. Uh, just how dangerous a situation was this for your first responders and for businesses around that stretch in the block? Um, obviously, the main concern was to make sure everybody was out. Um, protection of the buildings surrounding the fire building and the collapse zone of the structure. It drew quite a crowd. Yes, it did. That, uh, what issues did that create? Um, for the most part, I think the crowd stayed <coughs> back um, to help with the Garrisonville Police Department and fire line tape uh, helped us with that situation. We did use civilians um, and our honorary firemen to help with that fire. You know, when someone runs into the police department and says, basically, the town's on fire, do um, you have any idea how long this fire might have been burning before someone actually noticed it? Not to my knowledge. Okay. But this, you know, this is a busy area on a Saturday, isn't it? Wouldn't it be? I would think so, yes. Bill, the, um, I do know that there was somebody that was going door to door telling the business owners, the occupants, that there was a fire and they needed to get out also. Okay. And that's separate from the person that ran into yes. the fire to the police department. When do you expect to be able to tell everybody more about how this happened and whether it's there's any, you know? I would have presume probably two to three weeks before we can narrow anything down. So, so these, there were people in these businesses at this time? Yeah, they were occupied. So these were people going in there to try to get them mm -hmm. out and everything like that. So it wasn't like they were closed on no. Saturday. Things were operational. It seemed to be a regular Saturday. In the this was uh, Saturday at 1.15. Yeah. I mean, there were people in most of the businesses and employees, so yes. It's, we were very fortunate that everyone got out okay. I mean, it could have been a lot worse than it really is, you know. And the area that it first started, that was noticed where the fire was? Uh, we're still working on that as part of our investigation. Did it appear to be occupied? <clears throat> All the businesses were open at the time, so I would say yes, it, the, the whole thing was occupied. Were there apartments? Or, I don't know. No, what the no, no apartments. Living. No, no apartments. Residential. Residential. There's, uh, there's it was all business. Yes, was businesses all business. on the ground floor. About how many people do you think were in these um, 13 businesses, four buildings at the time? Would you estimate? I don't know. I have no idea. Are we talking mm -hmm. dozens? Are we talking? If I would guess 20? between all of them, employees and I around 50 maybe. About 50. Total. Wow. So you're right. It's it could have been a lot worse. My wife was one of them in one of the stores. So, <laughs> so yeah. What store was she in? Um, she was in Shaker Tree. And working or? No, shopping? she's in there, shopping. <laughs> so what did she see or hear or smell? Or yeah, what, did, what, did what did she say she experienced? Well, some, that someone just came in and said that the building's on fire and that's everyone needed to get out. So they, yeah, I don't think, a lot of them didn't know it until, yeah. some of them didn't even think it was serious, I think. Yeah. Until they really got through there. With that being said, when this was visually seen, this was seen, there were no alarms that sounded, no no smoke alarms, no detectors that went off and all of this? Uh, the building is does, is not sprinklered and is not monitored for fire suppression as far as smoke alarms. There are smoke alarms, individual smoke alarms, but it doesn't go to a monitoring center. What's the population of this about, town? About 2,300. 2,300. Right. Would you call this the largest fire in this uh, town's history? I would say so. I think it was, yeah. Sure. There, there was one firefighter 
who sustained smoke inhalation, is that correct? There's two. There were two. Okay, and with your department or another department? One with mine and one with another. Okay, and do you have any update on their condition? They are both treated and released and they're both at home. Okay, and other than, other than those two injuries, no one else affected? No. I have 34 different departments respond to an incident such as this. It creates a real <coughs> issue with being able to coordinate it all. Who handled that? And uh, we set up a command center, and that command center was broken down to um, water shuttle, water supply, um, and I had sectors built into the area around the building. So there's people in, in charge of each side of the building. Did you, uh, when did you uh, get the indication that this was going to be as massive as it turned out to be? Uh, very shortly after we arrived. It spread that fast. Because of the fire conditions upon arrival, yes. And you are literally just around the corner from yes. the fire. What was it like when you first got there? Um, hot, fire through the roof, thick black smoke. Um, I mean, you can see the pictures. There's an initial YouTube video from somebody before, right before we arrived, and the conditions of that building were unbelievable upon of our arrival. Chief, um, and the mayor alluded to this, there's still hot spots there. Yes. But in the course of the day, I mean, you saw this happening over several hours. Mm -hmm. um, your thoughts about how what was happening before your eyes and how these uh, firefighters were bad in the situation. Um, it's devastating to the community, for sure. Um, a lot of people lost their livelihood. Um, obviously, the businesses that were there, um, the fire was very difficult. Um, safety for the guys was priority number one. Um, so we established uh, collapse zones to keep the trucks and the guys away from that. Um, yeah. Um, is it too soon to give a damage estimate? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, ballpark? I, I couldn't even give you a ballpark because the, uh, I have to talk to each individual business owner, uh, like Miller Lawn and Garden. I have no idea how much equipment they had inside there. Um, you know, Chicken Shabby, how much they had, the shaker tree, what their kind of inventory was like. Um, so I got into go through all of that and talk to all those business owners to get some kind of idea of their contents. About how long did it take you to get the fire under control? Uh, we started releasing fire departments, I would say, between 8 and 9 o'clock p.m. <coughs> so, Can you give us an idea of some of the businesses that were uh, affected by this? Do you do you know some of the names of the businesses? Uh, there's Chicken Shabby. There was Shaker Tree, Barbershop. Um, there was uh, T&B Tools. The food cupboard was in there. 